in a world filled with money that you are going to spend on little cards that are worth way too much money because that's what they charge for them. That's right. You got uh, Neon Pocket Dimension to break it all down. Why uh, do they cost so much money? Uh, because they're cool and they're high quality. All right. Um, although I hear the prices are going down on Pokemon cards because the scalpers are getting nailed. The production's up, and that's great. That's what I'm hearing, at least uh, on the grapevine. Uh, of course, this is Neon Pocket Dimension, a place for all nerdy things. All nerds are welcome. I'm joined by Boxcar Miguel right there. What's going on? There he is in the middle. And then, of course, we got friend of the show back again for another fun episode, Nave of Gaming Together Podcast. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Oh, yeah, baby. Um, we're here to howdy, talk. We're here to talk about card games today, and that's pretty exciting because it's something that we haven't really done. We've done tabletop RPGs. You know, everybody's talking about, um, what's it called? Blotro all the time. I was just talking we about did it. tabletop? We did tabletop games multiple times. I remember, I remember an Odd Valley tabletop. I don't remember an MPD tabletop. <laughs> we definitely did one uh, also with uh, the homie, the same guy, uh, Sam. If you remember Sam. Yeah, I remember Sam. Not the Pizza Man Sam, the other Sam. No, not the Pizza Man Sam. Yeah, the other yeah, Sam. yeah, yeah. That, that Sam. Um, <laughs> that Sam. And it, hey, there's so many goddamn tabletop RPGs. I could see us doing more. I, of course, I want to do just like a straight up board game episode. That'd be great too. But this is in the same realm of sitting at the table with your friends and playing with physical shit, not video games, no screens. You know, maybe to track stuff, I guess, on your phone. But when I in middle school, when I had Magic the Gathering, there was there was paper, reams of paper. You know what I mean? And a pen. If you oh, needed yeah. to use that, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Keep track of your health. Nave, uh, how are you doing today, buddy? I am doing all right. I'm a little tilted off my games. We were talking about this beforehand. Uh, I've been playing The Evil Within. Rest in peace, Tango Gameworks. Rest and in peace. Um, it's so sad. <laughs> and what's even more sad is how the evil within controls. Holy hell, this game makes me mad when it puts you in a room with a lot of enemies. It's like <laughs> not the optimal situation. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, absolutely. It's definitely not easy. Like, I couldn't get past that beginning part where, like, there's a dude walking around trying to kill you and then you have to sort of stealth around and he keeps like going into each room with you. And I was like, yeah. this is kind of annoying me, but like, I'm I, so bad at it. Like stealth stuff. <laughs> Luckily the yeah, game, you just got to get past that stuff. And then you, they give you a shotgun and like, then you're home free. But, uh, then you realize that the game doesn't really want you to fight too much because you try, mm-hmm. I tried to go all RE4. Like I could play RE4 like a ninja, Mm-hmm. You can't do that with this game. You've got to kind of run away and then shoot them from afar. Mm-hmm. But it's it has that problem in thir- some third-person games where when the guys get really close to you, it's impossible to shoot them now because yeah. every slight movement like is the whole screen. And so <laughs> yeah. it's a, you just can't shoot them. So I just got through. I'm in like chapter six, probably like close to the end of that. Mm-hmm. And um, I got through basically the Resident Evil 4 cabin scene. But for this game, I imagine. And so I'm just, it took me like seven tries of like really cheap random deaths. And I'm finally out of the, out of that gate. I would have been really mad if I came onto this show and I hadn't beat that. Like that, uh, this is the second time in a row. Last time I was on, I was talking about Final Fantasy X. And mm-hmm. I would have been really mad if I didn't beat the Chocobo race. So mm-hmm. like, I just put myself through really stress- stressful situations right mm-hmm. before yeah. NPD. For yep. no reason. You just got to play like a round of uh, Elden Ring or something. You're like, oh, it's coming up. Let's play Bloodborne. Let's get yeah, Superman. let's go fight Ornstein and Smog. <laughs> a notorious <laughs> fight that I've never yeah. beaten by myself. Isn't that, uh, is that from Dark Souls 1? Yeah, it's the first yeah. one. That was the that was what filtered me the first time. I, be- I beat that shit on the Nintendo Switch, Miguel. That, that boss fight. I didn't Impressive. beat the game, though. Didn't beat the game. <laughs> And then I loaned it you to my brother. Well did. I lo- <laughs> then I loaned it to my brother, like alongside all my um, uh, Nintendo Switch games, and uh, I haven't really asked for it back yet. I wonder if he's playing it. 
Because I got a bunch uh, of like little cartridges. Oh, do you? Yeah. Yeah, I did. Yeah. And I was just like, little, little it's because you know my my brother, little Eddie, he had just got a switch, and I was like, I have all these sick games, you should play them. And every time I asked him, he was like, Yeah, I'm still playing uh, Zelda uh, Breath of the Wild. I'm like, should have just gave you that one. Yep. <laughs> you you were expecting too much out of him. <laughs> yeah, but there's other games on there, and you know who plays this, who plays a fucking Switch these days anyway. That thing's old. That thing's slow. Give me a Steam Deck. Oh yeah. Give me a, a fucking Switch. Still play Steam that deck. Shit. Um, it said why I'm new at the top this whole time. Probably I wasn't paying attention, but let's just get right into it. This is our section of the show where we uh we talk we talk about what we've been nerding out on. So let's start with Miguel this week. Miguel, what you been nerding out on? So, you know how I said I was at the end of Final Fantasy 16. Mm-hmm. I would like to say I beat it, but I did not. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I finished all the um, all the side quests, and mm-hmm. then I ended up just buying the uh, the expansions. Oh, nice. So um, I just beat the first one, and then I'm going to start the second one at some point. But Sweet. Good shit. Okay, yeah, so I'm dude. still doing that. Um I haven't really been doing a whole lot that I can remember. I did write one thing down. Oh, okay. I watched. Wow. Um, it's a documentary called The Contestant. Okay. It's on Hulu. Um, Hulu? I'd heard about this story like ages ago at mm-hmm. this point, but it's about the um, that Japanese game show Denpa Shonen, mm-hmm. where um, they had a segment because it was like a variety type show, but they had a segment where. They had a guy living in an apartment, butt-ass naked, and the only way out was to basically enter a bunch of postcard contests Mm -hmm. and win a million N worth of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And I believe this is where the um, eggplant emoji comes from as far as for the penis. Hmm. So the dude's name is called... uh, He he goes by the name uh, Nasubi. Mm-hmm. Because he's got a long face, mm. um, and they started putting like an eggplant on his dick. <laughs> so the whole thing is like the fucked up part is okay. he didn't know that he was actually being it was being broadcast. Oh, oh! So that's the entire time he didn't know people were actually watching him. So you oh, definitely crazy. give it a watch. Like it's it's like crazy and fucked up. You see, like he it's like he's playing to the camera, but I think he was honestly just kind of going crazy. Yeah, I mean it's possible. And at one point, like, had he not won anything, uh-huh. he would have uh, basically starved, and they would have were gonna have to like stop the show. But he like wins a bag of rice, so they keep the show going. And so this guy lives in like this small enclosed apartment, mm-hmm. butt ass naked for like fifteen months. Wow. Um, so it, it's nuts. a really interesting story. I highly recommend it if you don't know about it. Um, I, it was, I originally heard about it on um, This American Life. They they did mm-hmm. a there was an episode of that about this. Yeah. Um, but this documentary gives you a little bit more of kind of what happened after because I guess he's originally from Fukushima. Oh wow! So then, like, you see kind of like stuff happen after the fact, and he seems okay for the most part. But um, it's really good if you haven't seen it. I yeah. I turned Hulu on. I'm like, oh okay, I know what this is, and I turned it on and I just watched it. So. Highly wow. entertaining, highly fucked up. Um, if you don't know the story, definitely give it a give it a watch. Yeah, I love right. this story so much. Like, I didn't know that there was a documentary. I might I might sub to Hulu for a month just to watch this because I I've watched like a lot of video docs on YouTube about this. Like, I watched the Count Dankula one and uh, Moist Critical uh, mm-hmm. Penguin mm-hmm. Zero went over it. Uh, it's it's an awesome thing, and so I bet since it's an official documentary, I bet there's a lot of like really cool information. And I'm looking at the video, and it looks really high def. Yeah, like the some of the footage. So it looks like it's like, the source footage. I had only heard it as a radio show, right? So like I didn't actually get to see any of the video. And only like, watching the video, it's like he looks like he's like playing it up to the camera, but most of the time, I guess he didn't even know the camera was on. Yeah. Well, like, I think they would... he was under the impression that it was going. He he definitely knew he's being recorded at least. But yes. I think he was under the impression that yeah, he didn't know that it was being live streamed because that wasn't even really a a big known thing back then. Like mm. he's one of the first like <laughs> what is it? Uh, real 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 live streamers. I can't mm-hmm. remember what it's called. Something yeah. like that. Hot tubs. Or even like it's like even one of like the first <laughs> reality TV shows. Really, when you think about it. Yeah. 
Seems that way. It, it really is. Like, it, it, highly recommended. I have really cool. enjoyed it. I'll de- we'll definitely have to watch that. <clears throat> I mean, I'll I'll watch it. I don't know. Mochi Squeeze in the chat saying, I, I don't know if I could watch this. She's she make, watch it's it. making her feel uncomfortable or something. But I'll watch oh, it. Oh, well. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I mean, like, I feel like well, this is, I, I will say it, it is, is like a little Bo- hard to watch in the sense because you feel bad for him. Yeah. But, I mean, it's kind of like, like the Bo Burnham movie, you know, that's kind of uncomfortable yeah. toward the end. That yeah. movie's pretty so, cool. Though. It was sick. And I'm interested. Yeah. So I'll watch it. I've yeah, seen, definitely give it a watch, dude. I've seen some fucked up shit. Nave, what you been earning on? Yeah, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> uh i've been I, I haven't really been nerding out on much i've just been my nose to the grindstone on games but uh i've been mm-hmm. paying a lot of attention to the kendrick lamar drake okay. stuff okay yeah uh-huh. which has just kind of been like my only escape rope into reality i've just been watching all of these <laughs> uh these disc tracks getting dropped and man i i'm loving it mm-hmm. which i like drake i really really like kendrick lamar and so i'm just happy that there's just these ran i'm randomly getting a bunch of banging songs i think kendrick lamar has like four of the top six uh top streamed songs right now so that's kind of insane that's nuts like it's so fun it's great. Well, unfortunately, someone got shot yesterday yeah. over it. Uh-huh. Maybe, maybe it was over this. Mm-hmm. We're not sure, but because Drake was technically beefing with like, like thirty different rappers, so this could have been linked to anyone. But mm. I don't know if Kendrick's because of that. I don't know if Kendrick's going to drop something else. Maybe he'll drop something while we're recording. We can have a little <laughs> reaction. You never know. That'd it just cool. comes out. It's like in an Instagram video uh, as a share from a random tweet. Um, and you'll just see it. Um, yeah, I mean, like I'll be, I was like streaming uh, Vanquish, and I was in an Xbox party with Melissa. I think she's in the chat, and I, and she was just like, "Hey, Drake dropped," and I was like, "Well, guess I gotta listen to that right now. Well, let me pause <laughs> this game." You better drop what you're doing. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> so who's winning? Oh, absolutely, Kendrick. But unfortunately, <laughs> Drake is just on full. He's like in. <laughs> Since we're talking about card games, he's basically in face-up defense position. Got it. A little Yu-Gi-Oh talk. But it's, it okay. was the last song had a really cool title, a lot of good jabs in there, like some good like double entendres and everything. But he is in full-blown defense defense mode. Like some mm-hmm. of the allegations, he's like defending himself by saying he's too rich, or like if he's like this illegal thing, this horrible illegal thing that I'm not going to say on on stream is uh, if I was doing this. Mm-hmm. I would have been caught by now, I promise. And it's like, really? really? That's it? <laughs> I don't know if that's they I don't gonna, know if that's legally binding. He's going to go with the OJ defense if I did it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Fuck, poor man. child. Yeah, I really yeah, hope yikes. Kendrick makes another song. But I, th- he definitely emptied this clip last week. So he's got to reload. And I'm yeah. hoping we get another banger. The last song, uh, <laughs> Not Like Us, I have been bumping it like five or six times a day. I'm contributing nice. to Kendrick's dominance on the charts. Yeah, I mean, I, w- I would say that you are dirting out about it. And that's that's totally fine. That's why you're here. That totally uh, counts. Yeah, it, absolutely. Ab- absolutely. Um, and you said, what, what game did you say you were playing again? That you're mad oh, at? Uh, the game I'm mad at is The Evil Within. Oh, yeah, Evil Within. Um, yeah. <clears throat> uh, any other games you've been firing up lately or anything like that? Or I Really, I've been so... I've been, like, very uh, hyper-focused on just beating games because I'm keeping a tier cool. list. Uh-huh. I don't know if you want to throw the tier list up there. I don't know if it's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That Go might get and... a, the chat talking a little bit. But so sure. basically all the game. Some people will keep a list of the games that they beat. I decided mm-hmm. to do a tier list and kind of rank everything. I'll throw yeah. it in the chat. Cool. I'm Guns vs. Kittens. Sweet. <gasps> Look at that. <laughs> but, nice. uh, yeah, I'll bring it up right now. There you go. Yeah, so Vanquish is on there. It's kind of hard to see because of because the, the images get a little low res, but those are all mm-hmm. the games I've played in 2024. Let's see. Let's start um, at the top. We got Red Dead Redemption 2, Like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth, uh, Witcher Wild, uh, Witcher 3, Wild Hunt. Uh, is that Walking Dead Season 1? Yeah, Season 1. And Season 2? Uh, season 2 is... Uh, down here. Down on B, in the A tier, yeah. 
Nice. And then so that one past L.A. Noir is the final season. Oh, okay. And okay. they they are in order. So like Red Dead Redemption is the top. Mm-hmm. Mm. Left to right. Okay. Red Dead Redemption two, and that's just like the campaign. Yeah, I didn't play much of the. I don't even know if the online. I don't know if there's people playing that still. Mm-hmm. Oh, there is. Yeah, I mean, you know, it and it's fine, but the campaign is legit, dude. I'm with you there. That that is like an all time great. And L.A. Noir, fucking love that game. Miguel, did you ever I play was that so game? Shocked. I haven't played either of those games to be 100 percent honestly. Oh, oh man, <laughs> they're both really good. I'll put it. That I clearly way. highly recommend them. But yeah. L.A. Noir, <laughs> I played it as a kid. Mm-hmm. I played it in high school, and I all, it, the whole game went. <laughs> totally over my head oh my my innocent <laughs> sweet little virgin mind didn't understand anything that was happening eleanor is so serious i did not remember how insanely serious it was it shocked me but as an adult it was so much better just like how i played grand theft auto 4 which i think i'm going to replay th- this year as well but i played grand theft auto 4 did not understand anything in the story and when i played it again as an adult it is so funny. It is like way better than five. I, it's not even close. It's so fun. Yeah. But, uh, oh yeah. Um, I see Psychonauts two for some reason is in the S tier. I, I don't really understand that, but yeah. All right. It, it could be an A, I guess. Sure. Oh, did you not like Psychonauts? It could be an A. <laughs> it should be an S, but you know, it's an oh, A. Yeah, for yeah. Some it's, not your, it's not your tier list though. For some reason, really it's an A. But it should be I a really fucking debated. S. Debated. <laughs> um, the, the thing I, I put in top of a, and every time I repost this and add a new game, sometimes things move around. Like, mm-hmm. I think, uh, <laughs> I think something dropped, yeah, pal world dropped from B to C, like what, okay. upon further reflection, sometimes I'll move things around, but, mm-hmm. um, yeah, so I, there's a chance that I might move psychonauts up if I reflect on it more, but I think it kind it's... of dragged towards the end at, mm-hmm. when I played it this time around. Mm-hmm. So I was just... I don't know. I I have a hu- a very very high opinion of all the S's. Mm-hmm. So all of this I is just it. a vibe check in my brain. Yeah. Uh. All, it's it's your list. I'm just fucking with you, bro. <laughs> um. But I do need to play Wild Hearts. It's supposed to be great. Unicorn Overlord's been on my list for a while. It's definitely a game I want to play. But right here, dude. Robocop. Uh. Definitely want to check that out one day. Um, it's so fun. The but, only reason why it's in B is because the end is terrible. Like yeah. the last like chapter or maybe two are I, rough, but like the rest of the game is just so fun. It seems like a B game, you know what I mean? Which isn't bad. Yeah, you know the, the game that they made before the Terminator. I threw it up in A. Mm-hmm. That was the first game I beat this year. Mm. Was uh, that one? Okay, sick dude. And I really liked it. Awesome. Well, there you go. Nice list. Uh, we'll see how everything else shakes out. You know, we're, we're only in May. There's some awesome brand new games coming out this year too. And so we'll see if, if those make the list or, uh, they're coming next year. You know, we'll keep an eye on that tier list. Thank you. Thank you. Fuck. Yeah. All right. So what have I been nerding out on fallout 76? Pretty much the only game I'm playing. Uh, still great. I hit level 43 last night. And uh, I'm starting to get to the point where, like, I'm getting some pretty good weapons. It's, it's like, getting easier. I got, like, a power armor I could rock, like, the whole time now. And uh, I'm finally starting to get to the point where I'm, like, passing where I keep, like, ending up every time I start this fucking game up. Because I have, like, two saves on Xbox and now this PC save because there's no cross-progression. But this is the one I'm sticking with. So, like, I'm right there, like, ready to go to the next thing and experience, like, more of this game, which is what I'm committing to. Uh, But I'm also playing um, Pokemon Heart Gold on my phone, right? And that's... I got three badges, dude. I'm, I'm, like, doing it. Uh, I put that shit in fast forward mode and I grind, grind, grind a whole bunch of Pokemon. Uh, I'm trying to capture them and like get m- a bunch of them up to level 20 right now. So it's just like repetitive gameplay, but it's just on my phone. Just kind of passively like training a little in the bushes. My Pokemon get fucked up. I go like heal them, come back. And then the whole time it's in like 500 time speed. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's As like, God intended. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. Uh, so I'm, I'm having fun with it. You know, uh, I picked the, uh, let's see, what is it? Gen two starters, uh, the part the fire one, uh, Cyndaquil. Torchic. No, oh, I'm so dumb. Torchic is from 
three. Three, Gen yeah, three, that's right? Ruby, yeah. right? I think that was oh, the Game Boy I, Advance one. I don't know why I always get gold and ruby mixed up. Like, those two just are the same to me mm. in my brain. Yeah, well, I mean, because, you know, like, Heart Gold was Gen 4, and, you know, it, like, looks kind of similar, so I, I see why, you know. But, yeah, I, I went with Cyndaquil, and so he's in that middle transformation. I don't, I don't know the name of it, but he's looking, like, uh, pretty cool. But uh, I just caught a Grolithe today, and uh, that thing is so cute, you know. It's like the dot little. Are you naming one. the Pokemon? Every single one. After, Every single uh, one. I remember after when what? we did we did a uh, a Nuzlocke. Me and Philip on our show, like a co op Nuzlocke, which was the mm-hmm. worst experience I've ever had in my life. I never want to do it again. <laughs> but we were naming uh, after all these people that had guessed it on our show, <laughs> which mm-hmm. made them invested in our in our episode. But uh-huh. most of them died, which is just how Nuzlocke. <laughs> <laughs> so that's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, that killed me. Um, no, I mean, I name him like whatever, you know what I mean? Like, uh, uh I, ca- I captured an Abra and I named him Sneeko, you know, cause they <laughs> like to te- teleport away. Yeah. They yeah, teleport that, away, you know? So, so I was like, oh, it's fucking Sneeko. And I caught one. <laughs> and so I was super happy. <laughs> uh, I, I captured the Grolithe and I named it Ario because the Grolithe's a boy and my dog's name's Aria. So there you go. Oh, okay. Um, so like Spaniel. Yep. And then uh, I I got a uh, the vine Pokemon or Bell Sprout, and I asked Joy, and I was like, Joy, name this Pokemon, and she said, name him Little Feats, and so his <laughs> name's Little Feats, and so yeah, every single one has a name. There's a reason between all the names. Like uh, oh, like uh, my Pidgey, I named him Peege. like P E E G or P E E J, Peege. Peege. Yeah, so some great names. Um, that sounds like it would be a cuss word in the Pokemon world. <laughs> Beach. Yeah. Beach, you papa. I don't know. Uh, if it were like in a, you know, if it was like a Totodile talking shit to you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Spitting. Which, literal. if there was a Pokemon that would talk shit, it'd probably be Totodile. Yeah, little fucker. <laughs> um, cool. And uh, what else? Oh, and uh, Gundam update. Let's get those in the chat. Oh, Gundam update. Uh, I am on episode 470 of One Piece. So Almost there. That's my Gundam update for the week. If you don't know, Gundam update just means whatever anime I'm watching. Uh, it's evolved into that. So, yes, 470. Uh, the, I hear the time jump moment is about at 500-ish, so that's why I've been trying to like make that happen. Oh, BattleBots, I, I uh, started season 8. There's nine seasons, so I, I just got one more to go after this before I'm, like, caught up. But so far, the season is excellent. God, I just watched, uh, I think, episode three of season eight was uh, the he- the headliner or whatever. The main event was Hydra versus, uh, I think, a spinner. I can't remember which one. But goddamn, dude, Hydra is a flipper bot, and it has, like, a hydraulic pump in it and it just launches them like all the way to the lights like they just get launched and this this season's one uh version of hydra like he doesn't even really need to get them that far onto him because the front of it's like a wedge but then i feel like the flipper is further down in the front so he just needs to kind of get underneath you slightly and then he could just launch you like 14 feet in the air it's a fucking crazy so battle boss is so (laughs) funny because it's like you it's the most innocuous thing you could attend while also pro- having the highest probability of death. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, they have, they have the the blue bulletproof gl- uh, glass, yeah. <clears throat> so everybody's totally uh, totally safe in there. But the, I've, I've seen so. some metal get lodged into the glass before. That's definitely happened. Um, so <laughs> it's incredible. Watch it. It's on Max. You can watch it right now if you have Max. Also, you guys hear that the Disney Max Discovery WB is like trying to make a bundle together. So I guess cable's just back, baby. We ran away from these people for a reason, yeah. and then we let them back into our lives. Yep. Well, I was gonna. Uh, did you really think they were gonna let us leave? Right? Like, no. <laughs> it, like I got rid of cable because it was too expensive, and then I ended up subscribing to how many different services? Yeah. And it's pr- pretty much close to what I was paying. <laughs> Probably. Oh, dude. It's uh, fucking ridiculous, dude. <clears throat> did you hear that? Uh, also, quick thing. Uh, I'm going to take the wide move off because I'm just letting you guys know. Crunchyroll has profiles now. 
So, you know, if you want to use your friend's crunchy, you can keep, oh, your, yeah. keep your pervy anime on your own profile, and I don't have to see it. You know what yeah. I mean? I, I'm sure you don't want, you don't want maybe, you wanna, maybe you want to, maybe you want to see what I'm watching. You're I mean, curious? I might, you, but I don't want to, I don't want to fuck with your show progress. If I'm like, well, let me start back at episode one. You're like, how is it playing a one piece episode five right now? I'm on 470. It's some bullshit. No, it's better to have profiles. You got the little pictures too that you can have. I've got a little Anya. Yeah. Oh, I got Anya on my fucking shirt. Look oh, at nice. That. Oh, I got, uh, the, the dark magic samurai dude from, uh, black clover oh. on mine. It's She's been a... like anamorphing into a peanut. <laughs> oh, <that's> a... <laughs> I don't know if you guys have seen anamorphs. Yeah, but they, they, uh-huh. the cursed, the cursed middle ones. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's it's fucking terrible. The, the ones in the middle are a nightmare. Yeah, they're a fucking nightmare. Um, let's let's bring. Let's. Oh my god, I want to see the transformation. I want to see one transformation here. Let's let's watch that really quick. Let's see. All right. <laughs> what do you oh, think of that? God, what do you think of that shit? This yeah, is the just... books always had... The Ooh. books looked just like this. Whoa. Where there would be four of them. Ooh. Whoa. Oh, I, fucking, I forgot about these, to be 100% yeah, honest. Dude. Look like, at that what's one. What's great is, canonically, this really, really hurts. Yeah. So it's like the whole series is about children in agonizing pain all the time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's... It's really weird. And why do they got it? Like, wh- what I don't understand is why... What sto- a shitty wh- animal to turn into. <laughs> why, yeah. why do you... Do you have to start in this position to, to turn into the animal? Like, is it yeah, optimal? I, maybe. Like, hold on. Well, who would want to be a grasshopper? Who the fuck would want to be a grasshopper? All right, hold on. Was I need he... to turn into a grasshopper, guys. Yeah. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> well, let's, let's see it happen. What a crazy, what a crazy book series! That that gra- it looks like a cockroach. Yeah, it was more like a cockroach. maybe a cockroach. I was well, giving him a bit of the death. He'll survive worse. anything. Whoa! Oh, I did not expect Whoa. a bat. I did not expect a bat that time. <laughs> oh shit! Those rhymed bat and rat. Wow, was that worth That's it? That's very interesting. Was that worth it? That was definitely worth it. Dude, yes. <laughs> I think that yeah. <laughs> you took psych- psychic damage. Roll 2d4. That's how much damage you took. Arturo is asking in the chat, what is this? This is Animorphs. It's Animorphs, dude. You're in our age group. You fucking know an- Animorphs and you know it. You- this is a this is a book series for children. Yeah. Uh, right next to Goosebumps and House of the Traveling Pants yep. was Animorphs mm-hmm. where these kids mm-hmm. were... This existential alien war to genocide humans. They turn mm-hmm. into animals. That's right. Brain slugs. Look it up. Futurama. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, guys. Let's get into the main topic. Uh, you, If you are watching, you do hear some sort of heroic music in the background, probably. I don't know. Um, but I have it going. All right. And that's because we're getting into the wonderful, adventurous world of um, card games. Card games. Card games. Card games. Uh, so coincidentally, no. Miguel p- apparently hasn't ever played a, p- par- a card game before. Is that right? Ra- is that right? That's not true. No, that is, that is incorrect. Okay. Um, I have played. Fuck, I don't remember the name of it. Mm-hmm. Um. Okay. I mean, and I've played card games, right? Like, uh-huh. I think I think you should specify that you're talking like trading, trading card, card games, games, trading card games, as opposed to yes. right, like. A card game, which I am also not good at. And I you're right, don't generally right. play either. Yeah, I mean but, the, the title but, of the stream is trading card games parentheses okay. not video games though. Okay. Yeah. So, but yes, I've mm. never I never understood them to be honest with you. Like a mm. lot of things in life, I just don't get it. Well, before we even like get it's into not for me, but like, go on. <laughs> before we even get into trading card games let's just talk about trading cards in the first place like uh baseball cards did you ever have baseball cards me back, back baseball in the day? cards no. Yeah. no um i probably had like i mean tops was making all sorts of shit right there was mm-hmm. probably like uh yeah. like uh ninja turtle cards Ooh. that i probably had i had a bunch of other ones mm-hmm. um a buddy of mine just found a pack of uh uh, Michael Jackson trading cards from Michael- 1983. Michael Rack. Jackson? 
Yes, wrapped with the bubble gum. <laughs> Let's see, Michael Jackson trading cards. We'll see here. Oh, we're back to the tier list, people. <laughs> All right. Uh, <clears throat> oh, wow. Look at that. Yeah. Wow. That's he found something. a pack of unopened with the, with the bubble gum. All right. Which one do we want, guys? I want, I like... I want the sad clown Michael, personally. <laughs> right down here? <laughs> yes. Sad clown Michael? That's a good pick. I like middle <laughs> row, third from the right. The one okay. where he looks kind of like Beethoven. <laughs> you know that picture <laughs> of Beethoven? <laughs> <laughs> right here. He looks like he's about to compose, you know, Thriller, the yeah. com the uh Claire or de Lune. <laughs> or the orchestral version. Um I'm gonna go with Hmm, this is a good question. I'm gonna go with the one with bubbles, the monkey. Okay. Bubbles the monkey too. Yeah, sideways. Because that's the only one with an animal, you know? Portrait I think. mode? Oh no, it's the opposite. Yeah, it's landscape. Landscape style. Landscape. Um any other weird trading cards that you had, Nave? See tree. Uh, there were there was a game called Duel Masters, I think. Duel Masters. I yeah, I collected some of those, and I collected the Dragon Ball Z trading card game too. But I never really knew how to play either of them. Yeah, uh -huh. see, look at this. I thought this was a dream until just now when I remembered it. <laughs> oh, it's real. Oh, well, look, Xenomantis. Wow. Oh, this is way is cooler than Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, this is way cool. Look, that one's dropping like bombs. Or something. This is so violent. Holy, Holy crap. Yeah, look at th these look like enemies from a fucking bullet hell arcade game. <laughs> yeah, or Final Fantasy VIII, specifically that one. True. But look That's at this. That's a manga, right? Apparently. Look yeah, at this generic. That is a manga. Look at this just generic ass protagonist right here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but well, they were it's trying because to it could be you. Video, I think. Mm, that's a good point, Miguel. Yeah. It could be you, dude. <laughs> oh, so this is this is oh whoa! Look, they're together. Oh, what? Shit. Is this a death battle? Oh, no, no, it's, it's okay. It's an, it's an article. It's a Yu-Gi-Oh clone. Apparently. So yeah, it is a Yu-Gi-Oh clone, straight up. It is yeah. a Yu-Gi-Oh clone. I remember because yeah. I I was collecting these and I was trying to convince my friends and my friends always were like, yeah, these cards look. Yu-Gi-Oh is ugly. It's still ugly. Like it's I don't know what's going on over there, <laughs> but um. They're like, these look cooler, but Yu-Gi-Oh! is just like a better show. Yeah. Yeah, I think or, the I don't even remember if this had a show. I'm it, pretty sure it did. It definitely had a show, and it and, and it and the show was huge. And the show kind of taught you how to play, yeah. too, apparently. No, it doesn't. <laughs> the show is... No? There's, oh, everyone, is it wrong? please. Please go... There is a YouTube video called <laughs> Everything Wrong with Yu-Gi-Oh! Season 1. And it is so funny because sometimes they make up cards and just put JPEGs in them. Oh no! <laughs> it is oh. the f it, that's it right there. Yeah, that's the picture of it. Nice, cool. Well, I'm gonna save this uh, YouTube video. But yeah, let's see. six years ago, classic. Talking about it. All right, cool. Yeah, we'll put this in the description. Uh, we'll see exactly what's wrong. Uh, here's some Ninja Turtles cards. These are pretty rad. Yeah, I probably had a bunch of those to be honest with you. Calabon. Wow! Look at that. I mean, trading cards in general, like, were pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I would, I would, I would like to know what the first trading card game was, though. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, we could look that up. Uh, first trading. Like, I'd be curious because I don't know. Card game. Maybe Magic. Magic the Gal. Magic the Gathering. Apparently. Yeah, I was gonna say maybe Magic. Yep. It was introduced with Magic the Gathering. I think yep. it's '93, right? Yep, 1993. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, what it looks like magic head. <laughs> looks like trading cards were always. I mean, trading cards have been around since like fucking bef like pre nuclear family. I mean, like eighteen eighteen yep. hundreds, like late eighteen hundreds, I think. <laughs> but definitely got super big with uh, um, with baseball cards, obviously. So yeah, kind of wild that they didn't think to like make a game out of it until nineteen ninety three. Wild yeah. stuff. So there you go. Um, well, that's perfect because that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about Magic the Gathering. Um, now, I have some cards that I've had since uh, middle school. Uh, I may have some that I just like found randomly, and I think I'm missing some uh, because I do have a Leviathan card, and that was like my bread. And, that was like my best card that I had, I think. But uh, Nate, you've played like like tournaments and shit, right? Yeah, I've won a couple. Okay, okay. So, 
um just to talk about magic of the gatherings like basic rules right you you like make a deck it could be like there's different colors of cards for magic the gathering right yeah. um you could make decks like combinations of colors it could be just one color uh but like there's es essentially like these cards which are like lands cards that can either give you like that colors mana or yeah. mana that is colorless that can be used with certain types of points that you need to spend to play other cards or a combination of the two right is that all correct yeah right so so basically like green cards need forest cards plus a certain amount of colorless so it could be another color or a colorless land to play that card before you can actually really use it it's to put it out or if you're playing like uh like a spell or something Right. Yeah. Essentially, the, the lands are your resources that you use to cast the cards, as opposed to games like Yu-Gi-Oh, where you just play whatever you have, and mm -hmm. there are restrictions on what you can play. In Magic, there's no restrictions on what you can play, besides you can only play one land a turn, mm -hmm. Right. generally. Yeah, you just need to have the, certain, the amount of resources to play it in one, in one turn, right? That's a good card. Yeah. Uh, so that card would require one resource, and mm -hmm. that one resource has to be green. So normally, this like you can say colorless. Usually, we say generic because okay. In modern times, we have all their colorless is a specific. Oh, it, you can have actually need to have colorless specifically rather than generic mana. Okay, so, okay, yeah. okay, cool. Uh, that's just how I remembered it from the nineties, because that's what I played. Yeah, I played in the mid nineties. Miguel, do you have any questions? No, no, no. Um, I, I, I have a pretty basic um understanding of how magic works. Mm -hmm. so, so, like, I, I understand what you guys are saying. Ooh, that's a did I ever play? No, I knew a ton of people though. So it's really hard to do this because it's like a mirror. But um, as you can see, this needs one fire basically red mana but then also like one of any other color it could be another yeah, red so it costs two mana one has to be red and the one could be anything else so that's kind of like the basics with like how you play the cards and then with the cards there's like some cards are like spells that do shit like whatever it affects monsters it or it like does direct damage or it can fuck with uh terrain cards like that you get the resources from Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Or it's like a creature, which you put out, and at first you can't use, and then your next turn you could use to attack or do like whatever. And then there's tapping, which a lot of these cards have like a specific ability you use by tapping the card by turning it, and once it's being used, it can't like defend. Is am I right? Is this all correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. When creatures are tapped, they can't block usually. So mm -hmm. a lot of these card games, like trading card games, have like creatures in combat and stuff. And the way that they interact is in the in and it's different from Yu-Gi-Oh, which is usually what's directly compared to. Mm -hmm. With magic, you're always directly attacking the player, and then the player can choose to block with his own creatures or just mm -hmm. let the creatures attack and hit them. Yeah. Um in Yu-Gi-Oh, you have to attack the creatures. So the attacker has the has all of the uh decision making mm -hmm. rather than the defender. Um I see. But yeah, as if you do choose to attack, you're usually forfeiting the right to defend with those creatures. Mm -hmm. So that's like the trade-off. Yeah, and then certain monsters also have a tap attack. So then with those guys, you can attack directly monsters. And so those are like the tap the tap decks, right? There's like certain tap decks where you have like a lot oh, yeah. where you tap the card and it does like one damage to player or creature. So there's like ways to also nuke down creatures too. So like there's a lot of strategy in Magic the Gathering, but that's sort of like the basics. Like for instance, this is a spell card, and what it does is uh, you target two creatures, they get minus one, minus one, minus one until end of turn, right? So that would affect two monsters and make them weaker. And then if you look at the bottom of the creature cards, it has the numbers. One is like how much damage it does, and one is how much defense it has. You know what I mean? So if yeah. I use that card on this card, it would make it a zero zero, and it, or unless it can't go lower than one, I don't know. Is that right? Uh, yeah. If if anything goes to zero, it dies or zero okay. below. So then it would kill this monster. 
Yeah, that would kill it instantly. There you go. See, but then this monster also has. No, it sometimes it just has like cool ass quotes on it. You know what I mean? Yeah, flavor text. Yep, and stuff like that. So it's like it's always fun. But okay, so that's like the basics of Magic the Gathering. And again, these cards were from the '90s. I know that it got more complicated. I never did any tournament play. I, I tried to battle some of my friends, but they would decimate me because they had the better cards, and I just don't have luck yeah. and stuff. So, tell us what it's like to actually like play play the game. <laughs> um. Well, yeah. So the game is a lot more complex nowadays, but essentially <laughs> there's a very simple structure and all of the cards are building upon that so you basically have a blank slate of like maybe 15 rules that you generally need to remember and then the cards themselves are changing the state of the board um i play a very casual format called commander which is like instead of fighting just one other person you're usually fighting three other people it's usually a four player game and that makes the game infinitely more complex but mm. also simplifies the game in a way that you're able to communicate with your, the other players and like try and get assessments that way mm. whereas if you're playing in a one-on-one one -on -one game the other person is obviously just trying to crush you like to, to, to pieces like they just want mm. you to die as fast as possible so that yeah. that simplifies the game but also makes it more difficult to make uh like tactical decisions essentially Mm. Um, the games themselves, though, they play out as just kind of a logic puzzle, and mm -hmm. they the the good thing about magic is it has so many different play styles that to accommodate you, especially nowadays, whenever you play in uh, uh modern times, um, especially in more evergreen formats like commander that embrace more and more of the card pool, uh, mm -hmm. that yeah. you can always just hyper focus on what you think is fun like if you think big creatures are fun do that if you think countering people's spells and controlling the narrative essentially is fun you can do that or if you want to burn people down with firebolt with uh with thunderbolts and and stuff like that you can also do that like there's so many different ways to play and almost all of them are viable and that is what makes magic the gathering so approachable nowadays uh and this game has relatively low power creep which mm -hmm. I don't know if we should get into that, but like Yu Gi Oh mm -hmm. is really bad about power creep. Essentially, you yeah. have to play the newest cards or nothing. In Magic yeah. the Gathering, some of the strongest cards are the old ones. Like that card you pu pulled out, the crop rotation, is mm -hmm. an incredibly good card because Ooh. that card puts any land on the field for oh, yeah. one mana, which is an insane rate. And even though it says sac you have to sacrifice one of your own lands, which normally you read that and you go, oh, that's probably bad. You're normally sacrificing a basic doo-doo land and putting the strongest $500 land out on the table, which is how I usually play that card. Because, like, the older cards weren't worded in a way that they mm. cared about basic lands. They, back then, didn't realize that they're going to print the most ballistic cards. Like, <laughs> the, the, you know what I mean? So... Sometimes you can take advantage of those old cards. Sometimes the cards are so broken that they have to reword them, and that's called eroding. I don't know if we should get into that, but like, yeah, I know. Uh, the Gathering has a very uh, wide array of cards that you can choose from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, er er I like errata. That's not, you know, that's not too weird. Like, there's erratas for every single D and D book out there. So, like, if you had mm -hmm. bought the books like before a certain printing, then you need to like make sure to reword it properly. Like, like. With D and D fifth edition, like I had a fucking you know scan of it from like old times, and like it, you know later printings changes the way that stealth works like completely. You know what I mean? So like you need erratas. So yeah, essentially it's like if you don't know what an errata is, is the people making whatever the game is puts out like a like a message or like a PDF straight up, and they're just like, hey, just erase this text and write in this text on your card. Like, they just want yeah. you to, like, literally do that. <laughs> or, like, in your D&D &D book, like, wipe that shit out and write this over it, please. Thank you very much. Or you just have, like, a leaflet. So it's, essentially, it's like a, an essentially a living document. Mm -hmm. Right? It's always changing. Right, exactly. That's why, I like... That's good. It's like... Yeah, I mean, it's almost like a patch update for a board game yeah, or a card exactly. game. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. So, like, yeah, you could... It, 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 
if if you had a DRM free version of the game and you know like had a huh. specific update, you could play that outdated version, you know, mm-hmm. if you want. But like this is the way that they want it to be now. Um, let's let's talk exactly. Let's <laughs> the term is arata aratica. Um, Let's <laughs> let's talk about card series really quick. Um, so like I know that in tournament play, and this is what they were telling me in the nineties too. I mean, again, this is like ninety seven, ninety eight, I think, is when I was fucking with all the shit. Um, certain um, series were like banned in tournament play back in the day. So I find it interesting that you could use some of these old cards. Um, what what's your comment on that? Um, so there are the Magic the Gathering has multiple different formats. And that's okay. how they usually design the card pools. So mm-hmm. the normal, if you go to a card shop on like Friday Night Magic is like the like what they always try to push people to go to. On Friday mm-hmm. Night Magic, they play a game mode called Standard, which is only the last like year and a half of cards, mm-hmm. essentially. Go. And all of the different formats have different ban, ban lists and stuff. Commander is an evergreen format, which means you can literally use all the cards. And okay. Another one is called Legacy. But mm-hmm. no one plays Legacy though because you have to have a twenty thousand dollar deck in order to play that because they have all the strongest cards. But <laughs> they got the Black um, Lotus, dude. Oh yeah, uh, I think you only have <laughs> one in each deck. But there's a lot of different play styles that you can play within, even just standard, which is the the most limited version uh, mm-hmm. of the game. There's mm-hmm. another format called Draft, which is probably the most besides commander the most popular format and that one is where you have to you get multiple you get three card packs and you open them up in a giant circle everyone in the tournament is in a big circle and you take one card out of the card pack and pass the rest of you paid for these by the way and you pass the rest of them to the next person and then they get to take a card out and keep the card and essentially you keep doing that until there's no more cards in the pack everyone opens up another the their second card pack and then they just keep doing that and then you with those cards that you took out uh like the 40 something cards you build a deck with those and that's it that is a it's a really ad libby kind of like how smart can you build a deck? How lucky can you get with your cards? Like it's a very fun format to play, and generally that's what you'll run into if not standard in Friday Night Magic uh, events. Mm-hmm. Uh, nice. Yeah. So essentially, you run into uh, problems in Commander where you have all of these all of these cards. You have to kind of understand a lot of weird, crazy interactions. And everything turns into a big Rube Goldberg machine. So it really, there's all of these formats really just cater to a specific mindset that you have going into it. Nice. That's cool. I mean, I'm glad that it's not so, like, rigid that, like, there's just one tournament play or, like, just standard play and, like, that's it. Uh, you know, versus just, like, underground, like, just playing with the community on Discord or something. Like, the fact that there's all these other, like, official ways of playing, plus a draft mode, which is really cool. Um, to me, that's that's dope. Yeah. That makes it, like, interesting. You know what I mean? The cool thing, uh, I know we're not supposed to talk about video games, but <clears throat> Magic the Gathering's video game version, Arena, mm-hmm. they yeah. do incorporate draft mode into that as well. So, like, standard nice. and draft, and then they have their own format that i don't remember the name of like historic i think mm-hmm. but like sit because they don't have all the cards in there they can't possibly do like modern and all the crazy stuff but i i yeah so it's they're very popular uh formats that's cool um so uh also that just brings up another like memory that you're bringing up drafts <clears throat> um i did a draft version of uh uh, D and D minis. So like during fourth edition Dungeons and Dragons, there were, uh, they, they had all of these like booster packs for miniatures and like, okay, when you play D- Dungeons and Dragons, like you could play it on a grid and you can get cool miniatures and the miniatures are supposed to represent either your characters or like specific monsters. Sometimes I could just be like more generic made by like whatever company, but like with fourth edition, they straight up had, uh, um, what is it called? Uh, they had booster packs that would have random miniatures in it, but then the miniatures would come with like a stat card, right? And uh, so like they would have a draft mode at like, you know, uh, comic stores and stuff like that and game stores where you could like buy a bunch of boosters, you build your army, and then they give you like random map tiles and like 
like you make like a battlefield and then so like whatever you pulled out of there it could be like really powerful monsters it could be just like goblins that's your uh-huh. army and you go army to army which that just it just reminds me of that and i played it one time and that was the first time i ever ate jimmy john's <laughs> so you always associate jimmy john's with that oh yeah absolutely so yeah that's that's, that's pretty funny really interesting uh miguel do you have any questions about magic the gathering now no, I would say um, I, I was actually going to ask Nave if he still played, but obviously he does. So you answered my question without me asking it. There you it's go. very I cool. used to years ago, I used to play. I literally I live in Oklahoma and I live two minutes away, a two minute drive away from the biggest card shop in the whole state. And so oh, okay. if I wanted to, I could go over there and just play whenever I want. Mm-hmm. But um, usually my friends come over because I like to some I associate Magic the Gathering with getting drunk now because my <laughs> friends will come yeah. over. Mm-hmm. I have a spare bedroom that just has a table in the middle of it. And if we're not playing a board game, we're playing Magic and hollering at each other. So sweet. Uh, usually that's how I end up playing Magic like every two or three weeks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's like me and dungeon mastering. Magic. You know, same thing. Always drinking. Got it. Very true got to um <laughs> i try not to smoke but then the homie brings a pen and then you know like halfway through i'm like all right i'm smoking but it's cool we got this um and then you're yeah, then staring just terribly. staring into the abyss <laughs> for a little while you don't really understand what's it's going on fine anymore. it's because we're in the middle of combat and then we got this um so like also i i i remember planeswalkers being a big thing a while back can you explain planeswalkers really quick so before, whenever I talk, I said in this in the uh, the general rules that you're always attacking the other opponent and they get to block with their creatures. Mm-hmm. Um, I also said that car- generally cards themselves are changing the the dynamics of the board state. Planeswalkers essentially get treated as another player, kind of. The, the cards themselves have effects on them like every other card, but they also have their own life total, which is called loyalty. That doesn't really matter, though. And so you mm. can directly either attack the op- opponent or you can decide to send some of your creatures to attack the planeswalkers themselves so that the opponent can't use their abilities anymore. Oh, wow. Uh, and, yeah, and then the opponent can decide to block cre- with creatures to defend the Planeswalker or defend themselves. Usually that just gives you uh, another more dynamic tactical decisions uh, within the game. So Planeswalkers are really cool, a really cool introduction. They're just another card type, though. So mm. they don't really change a whole lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of them are incredibly strong. But, like, once you get into crazy competitive play, usually you don't see too many of them. Mm-hmm. Because they're a little slow. Mm-hmm. Well, I think like when they were, like, when that was the meta or whatever, like that's what people were doing back in the day, right? But it's been a while. Like, mm-hmm. so I knew this one dude. Thanks for explaining that, by the way. Uh, I knew this one dude that like would get really deep into card games or like anything. Like, the, okay, this dude I used to work with, he would change his car like every year or some shit. Like, he was one of those, like, lease people where I don't know if he would, like, trade in all the time and just get a new car. And he'd be like, yo, now I got a 350C, bro. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. And this was, like, 12, 13 years ago. Um, And so, like, if he would ever get into anything, he would, like, obsess over it, whatever it was. Like, he would chain smoke, you know. Like, anything that he was into, he's really into. So, he eventually got into Magic the Gathering. And this fool would just drop thousands buying, like, the best cards and stuff. And it was crazy. Are we friends in the past? Uh, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Like might me. I'm not going to I'm not gonna dox him, but he was a cool guy. I mean, I think, you know, I, last time I saw him was at my birthday one year. I mean, he's a cool guy. It's just, I just remember him being like, yeah, man, I just spent another two grand on, on like, you know, a white deck. I'm like, wow, this is fucking crazy um it's but- cardboard crack is what people call it and <laughs> i have unfortunately fallen severely a victim to it <laughs> yeah and but the, again that, bringing it back to planeswalkers like it was those days so he was like telling me about the you know all that shit and he was like oh yeah i got every single planeswalkers dude he's you know yeah. so the cute thing about it is that um in the game like 
you are technically a planeswalker. Like, like that's how you are in the lore. So mm -hmm. the the lore is that the people playing the duel are planeswalkers, and they're summoning the creatures. That's how you're playing the cards and doing the spells and stuff. And so it, like, even in the lore and like the the flavor of the game, the planeswalkers being able to be attacked by the creatures. I just love that. Like, there's so many little cute things about that within Magic. Like, they it's really thoughtful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, Pretty cool. Any like before, like we're gonna transition into just looking at like the price of certain cards, and you can tell me like which ones are cool, which ones aren't. Miguel, you can pick some out that like just have cool art or you're interested in. Uh, but before we do that, is there any other like cool Magic Magic the Gathering stories or information that you want to give to us? Uh, well, so a uh, Captain Birdseye in the chat. Which is this is funny because it says neon pocket dimension underneath us. So he says uh -huh. dimension looks like he's trying his best critical impression. The funny thing about that, I'm not calling you out. I think it's funny. No, it's but, because um, it's because it's like your name. Yeah, like, it does the, look like that. Like I'm neon, Miguel's pocket, and your dimension. <laughs> yeah, oh, <laughs> the uh, the funny thing about that though That's is funny. I learned about moist critical in the middle of a magic the gathering game Ooh. because they asked me if i because they asked me if i knew who he was because i looked just like him and i showed up in like a white t-shirt so mm -hmm. i looked like i literally was cosplaying as this <laughs> <laughs> guy we go you ever, <laughs> you ever see this guy? i mean this guy's pretty white i'm just just saying <laughs> also avid pokemon card collector so mm -hmm. This guy he has a full sheet of the yeah he has a like in that picture in the corner you can see yeah on, I see it over uh, here on the wall mm -hmm. well oh that's not the yeah. sheet but that is some cards oh, he has a full sheet of like the first uh the first card set sorry I was like losing my mind just then and then I then I talked to my friend uh, Post, Post Malone, Malone. <laughs> yeah avid Magic the Gathering player do you know the story about Post Malone and Magic the Gathering I do know that he dropped a shit ton of money on on a card what was it a Black Lotus it he bought I don't know if he has a Black Lotus I assume he probably does but he spent a ton of money on this card called the One Ring which Magic oh, the Gathering did a collaboration with Lord of the Rings mm -hmm. and they made a specific card that was a one of one like there's only mm -hmm. one copy in the whole world somebody opened it in Post Malone yeah. Posty went and got it. This so, guy right here, he he op yeah. This guy opened it and Posty bought it for a shit ton of money, like what a million dollars? Like two million. Two million. Or something like that. Yeah. Brand I new mint. Oh, there it is. I don't Polygon. know why. I just have all this useless like Magic the Gathering that came out in 1993. I don't know why I have all this useless information Dude, in my head. This is why I asked you to be on the podcast because you could like you were born to podcast, bro. You just have all this like information to get out there for no reason yeah that's cool though it's cool as fuck i don't even know what it does it's written in fucking black speech Elvish. dark speech yeah i think it's I, called I black remember. speech honestly it's like it's like the language of the orcs i believe look that up lord of the rings people um it's like a bastardization of the elvish language but it's you know it's, it sounds kind of ra racist all right just saying <laughs> yeah, they're all just really. i mean <laughs> Let's not get into it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so hey, don't blame me. Don't look. I googled it. See, it's real. It's a real thing. Swear to God. Be mad at it the boy. Cool. Be mad at that English tart who wrote that shit. You know what I mean? He he was like you leave Tolkien alone. <laughs> Tolkien. Remember we did an episode on Tolkien on, on Odd Valley. That was yeah, a good one. So. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we got, we got to go back and talk about the the movies. Okay. I found this website, cardkingdom.com. All right. Do you know about this website? It, it's the it's the second best to TCG. Okay. Well, we'll check out TCG too. But um, I just clicked on a random link. Here we are. Any of these stand out to you? Let me get a bigger picture. Uh, uh, these cards suck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're not very expensive. Probably why they're like... 35 cents. Yeah, yeah. 349. It says trending now. These are all trending. Nothing? Let's those see. Are, yeah, these are bad. Let's I see. Think, I think these are, are, are poor man cards. Those are, those are all new. So I think people, they're trending because people are buying them for uh, for standard, which is okay. usually what drives card prices besides Commander. 
let's go to rarity what mythic is that the highest rarity yeah mythic's the highest rarity all right let's see what we got here fifty dollars for this card that's not bad some malcolm synthesizer right. for just one card miguel all right what i mean we're considering rarity. what some of these cards go for yeah 50 bucks isn't what? bad dude. okay what what is the <laughs> necess what is the like lowest oh, bar of uh deck size like how many cards do you need in the deck minimum um, 60 cards for most formats. Commander has a hundred card, but it's a singleton format, so you can only have one copy of each card in it. There you go, Miguel. One, one, okay. one of sixty. What's what's fifty times sixty? Echo. What's fifty times sixty? It didn't want to answer 3, to me. Three thousand. There you go. Thank you. Three thousand. <laughs> I think. Yeah. I, I thought I would ask like... my fucking thing, and it's okay. It's thinking. <laughs> it's still trying to figure. It's it's literally uh, thinking. Gonna... It's Magic the Gathering. It's the only reason why I can count is because I have my to count. <laughs> Dude, how the fuck is my Alexa slower than you are, are at math? And it like didn't even say anything. Um, all right. Let's let's t let's, t let's think about this. What's a what's a pack of cards cost right now? Uh, uh, let's see. Four dollars, I think. Five dollars. Okay. And how many packs at four or five dollars would you have to get to get that one card? Oh, a Ooh. lot. Uh, it's so if really you rare. Want to get, if you want to get a specific card, it's o almost always more uh, financially savvy to just buy the card from wherever they're, you're buying it from, unless yeah. they start getting the outrageous prices. True. It depends on exactly. what you're buying it for. Mm -hmm. Because if you're buying it for a singleton format like Commander, 60 bucks is nothing. But if you need four copies of it... Uh, you might want to buy a box of... You might want to buy like a box of uh, cards, which is... Yeah. I think 30 packs and then just try and trade into it, which yeah. mm. is still so expensive. So it's like, you know, <laughs> I mean, either way, I think not. you're going to be spending a shit ton of money, right? Like, Oh yeah. Oh yeah. If I really oh, yeah. want that card, 50 bucks, that's not that bad. Dude. Now, if yeah. it was like a three or $400 <laughs> card, I'd be like, eh, eh. $50, <laughs> 50 bucks isn't bad, man. No, so no. What a, what a lot of people do is just, so it's so many, since you, Get in this hobby, you start just accumulating lots and lots of cards. If you start playing in events and tournaments and stuff, the the events usually will just give you packs of cards. And then the tournaments, mm -hmm. if you do well, you like get, getting like halfway through, like halfway up the uh, little ladder or whatever, then you usually will get like one to three packs of cards if the tournament's big. And so you that's the, the prize, is you're getting more and more packs of cards the better you do. And so you just start accumulating these cards, and then you can trade them either with people or to the store. And then that way, instead of like buying the $300 card, you can get store credit and just get the card for like 40 bucks, or like get it off a person who wants a full play set of Ristic Studies or something like that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. okay. Which is how most people kind of navigate. So I have multiple cards that were like $300-ish, and I never paid $300 for any of those cards. I always traded around and like try to get there with other things. That's cool. That's cool. No, uh, that's a really good way to do it. I think that's awesome. I think obviously there's going to be people who have the means, or some people who don't have the means will just run up a credit card. And, yeah, you know, yeah. it is not a yeah. hobby for people who are not good with money. Me specifically. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was going to say streamers. Very, Fucking I streamers can see it being very, uh, very detrimental to certain folk. Oh yeah, it's painful. Yeah. So here's one As booster. Here's one booster, um, and you know, like each, like I think the series is what it's called, like the Fate Reforged or something. I don't really know. Yeah, exactly. that's the set that it is. Mm -hmm. And then there, there will be boosters yeah. for like every series or whatever. Yep. And then, I and mean, it's eight dollars a pack. I mm -hmm. don't know how old that is. Yeah, um, I mean, I don't know what the sets are. So, so I, what is the most recent set? So I just googled like I'm. I was just trying to find like one booster pack. So like it looks like there's 15 cards in here. It's like 888, right? But then there was another set that was like this one that has three boosters in it for 1166. So it seems like the more you're buying, yeah. you're kind of getting a better deal. But also this the is another also series. Is uh, if the, the older the packs get because they're not in print anymore, the more expensive they get. So. There you go. I think the most recent set it says is Outlaws of Thunder Junction. Oh, that hasn't even come out yet. 
I don't think. Oh. No, it just came out. Okay, so find the outlaws, which is cool. So the best thing about Magic the Gathering, I'm sorry if I'm derailing it. No, you're but, good. Uh, this will be quick. So no, the, the best thing is that each set usually takes place on planes because, like, your planes are walkers. You're essentially, everyone is just teleporting around to different universes and, like, fighting. And so this set is like a cowboy land with dinosaurs and, like, Ooh. it's like they're cowboys. And so every set just is is just a new demographic that you can tap into the sets that i got into which were back in like 2013 they were vampire themed Ooh. vampires and werewolves were going to war and so there you, you see what i mean though yeah they're very mm -hmm. cowboy -y, and it's it really that is just one more avenue like i said the game is so customizable and there's so many different ways you can build decks there's also so many different flavors of cards that you can get into that will just there's so many different ways it's so, it's way too addicting it I'm really like, is cardboard crap. i'm like i want to get <laughs> i want a pack now um i'm not gonna buy one that don't even have them i don't have money for this shit right now but look at this <laughs> that's so cool it's, no th that's th that's cool. The, the one thing i will say about magic i always like the artwork on the cards yes i thought it was cool even though yeah. i didn't play the fucking game the Agreed. Artwork, artwork was always always really cool on, on the cards. Look, you get a full ass box for one hundred thirty five dollars unopened. I have art like wow. so the Magic ga the Gathering art is so good, like so good to me that I just have pieces of art in my house. Like I have a I have a tapestry and I have a one of those scroll things mm -hmm. of just oh wow it's just card art extended. Like mm -hmm. I would highly recommend people looking up Magic the Gathering art because yeah, for sure. It's and they and the artists they always commission the art. Mm -hmm. So um the artist will sell full prints of most of the Ooh. cards. I one of my favorite oh, artists, man. and he's the generic one, so any of the Magic the Gathering heads are gonna crucify me for this, but like Seb McKinnon is just such an um, immaculate artist. Uh and he usually does like black and white cards, uh, and sometimes red. So he's like that's his he's like very macabre. And like weird, and so he has these really interesting interpretations of cards. Because generally, what Matt, what Wizards of the Coast will do, the people who make Dungeons and Dragons, they mm -hmm. will match the yeah. Gathering, and they'll go to the yep. they'll go to the artists when they commission them and be like, okay, this card, here's the name, this is what it does essentially, and uh, they, this is the colors, and this is kind of the vibe we want, and then they just let the artists interpret whatever they want, and it's. It it really is super interesting from a collector's standpoint. Mm -hmm. If you don't even want to play the game. Oh, I have a yeah. oh hold on. Yeah, no, and and that's the thing. Like Wizard of the Coast gets great artists, obviously with D and D as well. Um, I do have that mm -hmm. art book that Mochi Squeeze got me that has like some prints in it that I'd like to frame that are just like incredible. So like, of course, it's in the same realm. But like, like Miguel, like you're saying, like. Some of the best fucking art. Oh, you have that same piece. That's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. This is yeah. a playmat. Oh, that's a playmat. Yeah, I can't tell. Oh, if that's I'm pretty cool, dude. That is sick, dude. No, I can totally but see it. Just one more way to <laughs> get money out of us. Just, <laughs> uh, if, I was going to say, I think we can see it, but not the stream, Jacob. What? When he was holding up his playmat. Oh, no, I mean, it was in the oh, little it was window. probably really small. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was like pretty small. small. Sorry. It's all good, dude. My bad. My um, bad. <laughs> no, no, you're 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 good. My bad. I should have went to this view. Well, I mean, the art the art was on the screen too, so it's the same art. Yes, it is, the art was on the screen. Yeah, you could totally tell. Um, just want to call out what Steven in the chat was saying. He said it's addicting, uh, but it's addicting to keep up on it for tournaments. So, like, obviously, you have to keep buying the cards to keep up, right? Yeah. Uh, and he Which says he has. That's the part about the evergreen formats. That's why Commander's so popular is because you yeah. never... I my The cool. decks that I have, uh, I haven't bought cards in like four and a half years. I haven't bought a single card or updated a single deck, and I still step on necks when I play this game. That's a, another thing to attribute to the power creep. Like, if mm -hmm. you can just build card... If you can build decks really well, you can buy cheaper cards, cheaper, mm -hmm. older cards, and still just completely blow people away. Mm-hmm. This is a uh, uh, Stephen was saying Kev Walker his uh, his art right here some pretty sick oh, it's oh that's an Eldrazi oh that's Dread Return yeah some epic Emrakul <laughs> epic fucking art here too dude I mean that's oh, like that's one, one of the black that's one of the black mogs wow ah oh, okay yeah so this guy's a yeah, badass too stuff. 
Look at this guy, Kev Walker. Look, look at this fucking dragon thing. Alligator? I don't know. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I don't like that guy. <laughs> I don't want to be in, trapped in a room with that guy, that's for sure. Um, <clears throat> let's look at some of those most expensive cards. And then after that, we'll uh, swap over to Pokemon because we should just talk about it. We should look at it. I've, I don't think I ever played the Pokemon trading card game, but I do have three cards right here that we could look at. Um, and I know that it's huge on Twitch, and I know that it's huge across the world. Like, you think the video games are big? The Pokemon cards are, like, a big part of why they make so much money, I think, uh, personally. Besides the fact well, that they sell and, and two copies of the same merch. game to every person. Well, that, They're most and merch, successful merch, in merch, multiple right? like, like, areas, aren't they? Yeah. Like, uh-huh. yeah. It's everything, dude. Yeah. Everything. You're right. You're right, but the cards are huge, and uh, we oh, absolutely. we would be remiss to not also talk about that. But let's look at this shit really quick. So I went to TCG. Dude, I just clicked search. I didn't type anything in. And then under the formatting, I put high to low. All right? So let's see what we got here. It might show you boxes. Oh, no, there it goes. Hey, time twister. Time look twister for 30. It says... Market price is four thousand two hundred ninety-seven dollars and sixty-six cents, but there are thirty-seven listings starting at thirty-seven fifty. That's so you these, know what that sounds like to me? Uh, a deal. <laughs> <laughs> the thing about these cards, uh, the really, really old ones that you can see, um, <clears throat> most of them, uh, some of them are just because it's you know it's collectors' items and now, but uh, a lot of these cards are part of this thing called the. Oh no, I just left my brain. The res- uh, the reserve list. Okay. And the reserve list means that the cards will never be reprinted again. It doesn't oh. mean that they can't do functional reprints in the future. Time mm-hmm. Twister is one of the cards that got a functional, semi-functional reprint, okay. kind of. Um, where these cards are just old, and then so they since they're not getting reprinted anymore, they're insanely high value collector's items. Mm-hmm. Um, the some of them aren't very good. Time Twister is insane. Like as is an insane card. So mm-hmm. like. There's a reason why it's probably the most expensive one on TCG player. Mm-hmm. The highest value card in Magic the Gathering besides the One Ring is a card called Black Lotus, which you brought up before, but yeah. I don't know oh, yeah. how to even buy that card. I don't know if you can buy that on TCG player, which is probably why I'm it's not there. I'm going to look that up because I think that I have a list here, but continue talking. But yeah, some of those cards are... Uh, the the chase cards in the most recent sets that just came out the i i can't remember what the alternate arts there's a specific word for it mm-hmm. but uh a lot of every single set that they come out with now have these like alternate art kind of versions of cards and whenever they first come out they're insanely high there's a huge spike in their value and then they slowly uh run down mm-hmm. there she is yeah so this card was apparently like so broken that they stopped printing it because it was so broken um and it's like one of the it's like one of the first series they ever came out with right black lotus yeah. card it's yeah, like basic alpha. it's basically the most op of all op cards uh so it costs nothing to put out and it gives you just a shit ton of mana so it's like really good and so that's why it's essentially like the rarest and best rare card out there and the most expensive card typically so on this game rant article from who knows when <clears throat> it says the price price range starts at around seventy five thousand. Uh, you might not find anywhere like to buy it. Like I don't think it's like listed on eBay or anything. Like you would have to like probably find a person in person. Yeah. To like get it from like this is like this is like the Superman or this is like the Action Comics one of Magic the Gathering basically. Like you have to be really lucky to score one of these like real real first prints. You know What's what I mean? really crazy about it is that, like, this card was basically, if I remember the story correctly, <clears throat> this card was basically just given away for free for, like, yeah. signing up for, like, a newsletter or something. Mm-hmm. And so people, oh, there shit. are stories of people that were using these Black Lotuses as bookmarks. Because, honestly, <laughs> back in the day, Black, Mo- Black Lotus was pretty good, but it wasn't, like, crazy good. And that's mm-hmm. because 
uh this it's insane to get that much value but the cards were just the power level was either insanely high or really low but black lotus never like actually contributed to power levels like that and there wasn't like graveyard recursion or anything like that mm -hmm. so there was no way because whenever you use that card you have to sacrifice it it goes to your graveyard there are cards that will let you get cards back from the graveyard and then put it into play or back into your hand and then you can infinitely loop that and it's called an infinite combo where you just get infinite mana and just do whatever you want to do. And that's why a lot of people would abuse this card. It's I don't think it's legal in command. It's I don't think it's legal in a lot of formats. Actually. Yeah, no. <laughs> because of how much it costs. Yeah, so yeah. it's debilitating. People frame this shit. It said it could the value could go up to 150,000. I was going to say if I have $150,000 for a card, do you think I'm going to play with it? Probably no. Not. No, you're going <laughs> to frame that bitch, dude. Or put it that, in that's like a fucking that, that is a house that goes in a safe yeah. <laughs> that I cannot live in. That is a house. That is a card a safe with a turret on top. I mean, exactly. obviously, <laughs> obviously, the most expensive card right now is the one that Post Malone bought. But like, this is this is yeah. like the the real actual card that you can. Yeah, I mean, who's gonna? Lot. No one's gonna buy that. There's only one of those. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, one and day it's two million dollars. One day it'll be auctioned off at his, you know, at funeral or something. When he, yeah, okay. I don't know. <laughs> it'll be oh, a haunted man, item. Mana crypt. <laughs> Here's a couple other cards. Let's see. Any, any more of these catch your eye? Like a lot of these are a lot of money. Some of these are just straight yeah. up like boxes of cards too. So that makes sense. At least that's, that's so. These lands right here are these. They're called dual lands, scrub land, and then the one on top was tundra. I think uh -huh. green blue. Uh, any variant of green blue lands is always going to be the most valuable because green blue is the most powerful two color combination. But like mm. tabernacle, I don't specifically remember what that card does, but like it's really, really, really powerful in vintage and and legacy. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if it's on. Oh, there's time walk. Like yeah, it's just you showing me a bunch of cool ass cards. But <laughs> yeah, I told you, you see that uh, lands are insanely valuable, even though they are the most boring of types of cards. Yeah. But, just but, being able to re oh. to reliably get the colors that you want. I mean, it's, how old is that box of cards? Go up. That's which one? For three grand. The, uh, either of those two boxes. These. Um, let's how see. old are those? Let's try this one out here. The this, this is, is stronghold are very 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 old. Stronghold. Yeah, it doesn't really have okay. any information, but it's a lot of money. Like some of these, dude. Yeah, this one's for really eight cool. grand. Whoa, that's like um, almost eight thousand. There are really cool YouTube channels. I don't remember what their any of their names are, but like, uh -huh. uh, they will open some of these sometimes. Wow. Like they will open them, and they'll have gloves on in like a very sanitized environment, and they're very carefully peeling the packs open and like looking at the cards. Because the reason why they're so yeah. expensive is because there are just chase cards that are worth that price. Like wow. just the opportunity to open a card that's worth like the price of the box itself right right so so w would wow. you say that if that's crazy you were to go buy a bunch of boxes not open them for 10 years and could i go sell these for three grand the, people point? do that it's really? uh, alpha investments yeah. is one of the is one of the channels i think that's a little controversial of a channel because he's <laughs> like he's an edgelord also but like he does that specifically because he invests in boxes of magic the gathering holds onto them and then sells them to his he has a patreon and he sells them to his patrons to open on camera and then send the cards to the people whoa so oh, that's okay. exactly what he does yeah yeah oh, it's very interesting it's a massive I mean, you look at business yeah a, a box of cards of the new of the new set right what 100 135 dollars mm -hmm. uh yeah i could sell that down the road for about three grand mm -hmm. that's not a bad investment yeah but you'd have to wait till you're depends, like yeah. 60 yeah you know? you'd have to wait but I mean, you can still do fucking do it. You'd have dude. to be like 65, 70 years old before you could make that money. But that's good. The thing with these, it's the thing thing. nowadays is that the vo the volume of print is so much greater. Even from when yeah. I first started, it's Absolutely. like quintuple the amount of print that we're getting. And that was just like a decade ago. Um, these cards are 30 years old. Like, uh, well, I yeah. would say like 25 years old, like those packs so that we were looking at before, the most expensive boxes. Mm-hmm. So I don't know how much of an investment it would be like 
in modernity, but it would, they do accrue in value. I was talking about that before where you were looking at that random card pack for $8. Mm -hmm. I was like, I think that that's probably higher than most card packs go for since that card pack's out of print. You can't get those. So I think people are just buying the packs for the chase cards. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, makes sense. So you have that possibility of opening, you know, of getting some like, cards that are worth the same amount of money like they could they can make their money back and then some right yeah people really do do that they'll go to they'll go to uh the card shop down the street and i'll watch people buy like five packs crack one good card trade the card in for like maybe the price of three more packs and then open those packs and then they keep all of the rares and stuff so that they can trade later and that's like you it's it's gambling yeah (laughs) exactly Exactly. Thanks for saying that because it's true. It is true. It's gambling for kids at the at that point. You know what I mean? I've done it. Yeah. I definitely have mm-hmm. opened a card that's expensive. There's a. I went to a. Uh, there the they do these things called pre releases where a week before the set comes out, uh, the they do a tournament on that Friday, the week before, and mm-hmm. so usually the whole weekend. And it was one of the Ravnica sets, one of the newer ones, and there was this card called Assassin's Trophy. And that's what the card that everybody wanted. I, among, like, maybe three other people, opened an Assassin's Trophy. That card was, like, $500 right at the time. And so as soon as the tournament was over, I immediately turned it in. And they're like, listen, this card's going to depreciate in value, like, really fast, so we can't give you a crazy amount of money for it. We understand it's worth, like, $500 right now. And I'm just like, I don't care. Give me whatever you want. And, like, we'll give you, like... 80 bucks for it. I'm like, dude, yes. Give me $80 of store <laughs> credit. Are you insane? Yes. I'm poor. Please give me that. Wild elephant. I'm just, Wild sh- elephant. I'm just showing random cards that I just pull. I'm pulling out of here. I know there's like other ones somewhere in a box, but, uh, cool. Let's look at the magic card, the, uh, Pokemon cards I have. Pokemon. Um, pick one. One in the middle. It's All like right. playing the game. <laughs> I want the, the shell game, right? Ponyta. Ponyta. We got Ponyta, baby. Ponyta. Ponyta. All right, Nave, would you which one do you want? I want the one on the right. This this one? No, yeah. it's this right one. Right is always right. This one or this one? Yeah, the your left, my right. This one. Yes. <laughs> okay. I think. I think. <laughs> Oddish. Oh, well, I am the odd one. <laughs> I guess for me, then, that makes me squidle. Oh, oh, there there was there was one God good damn one. it. There's a good one in there. <laughs> God damn it. That's all I got. I chose poorly. <laughs> that sucks. Dude. I chose so, poorly. Pokemon cards. This shit is crazy, man. Um, So I've seen some, like, kind of funny streams where uh, Tim Geddes has, like, just opened card packs. And, like, look. If you want really, like, if you are just bored and you just want to throw on Twitch, find these fuckers that are opening, like, any card game, trading card thing. I mean, Pokemon especially, probably Magic as well. But definitely, it is, like, really interesting what they do. Well, they'll have, like, the camera pointing down and, like, here's the table, you know what I mean? And they have the gloves on, right? You were just saying that. And they'll, like, pull out the card and then they'll be like, oh, we we got a Pikachu. We got ourselves a fat Pikachu. That's that's nice. We got five of these. Let's set that aside. And then pull out another one like, oh, this is nothing. That's nothing. Oh, we got a trainer card. Okay, we got like 15 Misties. Let's put them aside. And then they go through it. And at the very end, they have like the most rare ones. And they'll like slowly flip it over and then they'll show you. Um, it is yeah. just it's, well, it I is think all card packs have a rare in like a, a rare or higher. I think because Pokemon is also made by uh wizards of the coast Mm -hmm. and so they they're they're the very similar and so the rarity just as you look through the card pack just gets more rare so in magic cards uh usually it's three uncommons and then a rare and then there's a land behind that or just a random advertisement or whatever and then the there might be a foil behind it and if there's a foil i think it makes one less uncommon that way there's not like one extra card and you can just tell what packs have the foils in them Mm mm-hmm but um yeah it makes it very suspenseful yeah definitely um i'm pulling up a random youtube uh video which will probably get claimed but we're just gonna go for it anyway 
Uh, thank you, Lionheart. I don't know. I just Googled it. Uh, but this is this is an example of what it looks like. So he just kind of flips through them. Hey, you got this. You got that. Let's open another one. All right, we got this one. Let's fucking open it up. All right, cool. It's battle styled. Uh, there's like a thousand different series. Oh, this is the card they're looking for. Maybe we can get one of these ones. Is kind of what he's saying, right? He grabs like the ones on top that were gonna be the best. He throws them on the bottom. He just starts flipping through them. What do we got? We got this guy. You got that guy. You got that guy. You got this guy. You got that guy. Oh, that that one's a foil. That's a good one. Oh, and then then we got that clay doll, right? And so like, really interesting because they have like so many different variations of foils too. There's like reverse hollows and like edge foils and stuff. Magic starting to kind of dabble in that too. Mm -hmm. Um showcase cards that's what they usually call them or i yeah. think they uh they're that's one word for them but uh luke shot first he stole my thunder because now <laughs> he's talking about this oh shit yeah, oh that's a mew yeah luke luke is talking about this card if anyone wants to uh it's got a weird back on it this obviously Ooh. isn't true. it's a nonsense card but yeah for the first pokemon movie they gave these out of the theaters and so this isn't oh, the sweet. one that i got I bought this, but mm -hmm. like, I, I wanted oh. it. I was like, I need another one for nostalgia's sake. But uh, Luke, you stole my thunder in the chat. <laughs> that's Gage. Not gonna forget you. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, that's that's an incredible card. But you know, like there, there's so many influencers out there that are like, oh, let me show you my book of just Charizards, and it's just like a million different prints and types. There's like so many different Pikachu's and stuff. It's like, look. That kind of content is kind of fun to just like sit down and watch because it's like, wow, look at all that art. And they're just flipping through so many of them. And you're like, I don't know what these fucking Pokemon are. But you're like, look yeah. at how shiny it is. That's kind of a cool card. Right? I've, I've, I've always, my first thought when it comes to that content always, or my first interaction with that type of content was a kid watching videos of them on opening capsule toys. Yeah. Uh -huh. And you're just like, it's like an hour and a half of them just opening yep. capsule toys. I was like, why are you watching this? <laughs> right, it's so mindless. It's you get the dopamine rush whenever you yeah. they hit. If like, like it's just I don't know, man. <laughs> if the content creator or streamer is doing it, like I mean, anyone could just go like, "All right, here's all the cards." It's like usually the personality of the person they kind of build the suspense, and then when they pop off sometimes and they actually get the card it's like oh that's cool that card looked cool i don't know how much is that worth i don't know and then they're talking about it it's a, it <laughs> is so unfortunate know. because at first you're just intrigued because it's so yeah. alien to you and then mm -hmm. the more you the more of the lingo you learn and the more you learn you actually actively start learning like what cards mean something what yeah. cards don't the uh, one cool thing there is this youtube channel uh i think his name is the Ah, oh, what is his name? What well, he does this booster box game. That's what the the whole packs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, box game. Um, again, there's like oh, a uh, million. Valerian. Sorry, what? There's there's like a million streamers out out there that do this stuff. And like you were just saying, like they'll also like gift them to people who like you know send money to them like in like bits and stuff or like that subs yeah. subscribe to their Patreon and stuff like. It really is a massive streaming slash content creation industry, which is like it already like that should already cost money. Like someone's already making money and they're making money off the money that the card companies are making while also spending money. It's just like such a it feels like what it's are we doing? So weird to me, dude. Yeah, it's, it's just so, weird so strange. That, like so fucking strange. It's just so um, weird. Uh, the so his channel I was looking for was Talarian Community College, okay. which he is like kind of a he te as his name kind of implies. Uh, he teaches like Magic the Gathering and stuff like that. But one thing he does every time a set comes out, it's called the Booster Box game, mm -hmm. where he will buy a booster box with like 20, 30 cards packs in it. I can't remember how many, and then he'll open them in that exact format. Where uh, see, there's that first that for you video because mm -hmm. I'm it's listening to us. The internet's <laughs> listening. <laughs> I mean, I clicked on it. He opens it. them up. It literally shows you on the screen how much he kind of talks through, like oh, wow. why things are ex the the price that they are or whatever. And what his what he's trying to do is he wants to get to the amount that he paid for the box. And if okay. he does cross that in in value, then he will buy another box and then do it again. And he just keeps doing it over and over. And whenever you watch this, it you get a very good vibe of why people do watch this content. Mm -hmm. This is the most highly produced of the content, unless you're looking for people. Opening like 15 20 year old boxes of cards 
Uh, right. Obviously, that's probably the most uh, engaging. But yeah, yeah. So you see him up there talking in the corner. Yeah. He's a cool little guy. He's he seems cool. Uh, that seems pretty cool. I, I do like the idea of the pack or telling you how much he's made. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. I think that's really cool. Like, you're like, hey, I broke even. <laughs> yeah. That's very meta. <laughs> Essentially, he does that for two reasons. One, because it's engaging to that kind of community, but also it's to show people how like worth these boxes they usually are. Like, is it worth buying a box of this? Usually, that's it's not worth paying four hundred dollars to get a bunch of like piece of cardboard pieces of cardboard but it's like if you want to do it in an investment type of way like this is what it looks like mm-hmm. it's like a trial run and i think some people do that to see if they would want to do this as well it's kind of interesting um i forgot that, that to... is a very interesting way to look at it so <laughs> yeah it, it really is interesting and like like i said like i hey you're bored throw on content you know, there's all sorts of shit on the internet. You know, like there's a there's a lot of shit going on on the internet, and no, it doesn't always have to be like little kids uh, opening toy packs. It could be an old man <laughs> explaining why uh, th- this Magic the Gathering pack is. I was worth gonna say, $60. I believe all those toys were being opened by an adult. Thank you very much, <laughs> poor little children. It's what is it, Ryan's <laughs> World or whatever? Like my, I don't fucking know, yeah, dude, yeah, but I do believe it was an adult. Now. Mochi's uh, nephew is really into that shit and like he has his own line of toys don't get me started on the whole child toy ring it's shit. fucking weird, it's fucking, dude. weird it is dude. fucking weird yeah it's so weird but but i uh forgot to bring this up earlier uh mr hawks in the chat said look up the fallout magic cards we were just Oops. talking about how they had like a lord of the rings run they're doing more like collabs with other companies right now that are really interesting there is a fallout run so let's just quickly look at a couple of these like and you it. accidentally clicked on the video that you clicked on from Tolarian Community College was him opening a Fallout box. I'm oh, that's sure. incredible. <laughs> well, that was some of them, but here's a couple more. We got the Scrappy Survivors, Dog Meat, uh, a Caesars card. Oh, it was Mothman. That's from 76. Uh, you got some science people. That's kind of cool. But yeah, it's pretty awesome that they have like that kind of coll- uh, collab. Right now, Fallout's it's really so cool back. Thing. Oh, it's so bad. It's so bad. The really awesome thing about these as well is that sometimes they'll have reprints with alternative art. So mm-hmm. if you get a crop rotation, that card that you that I keep bringing up that you pulled out earlier, there might be a crop rotation in this with Fallout art. And that becomes like, oh, I really want that specific variation of the card. So all these cards that are constantly getting reprinted, usually they'll have the same art, but like sometimes they have really flavorful, awesome art. And so that also encourages people like me who don't keep up with standard to go, maybe I will buy one of these Fallout packs because I, or not, they, the Fallout collaboration, they're in like boxes, but mm-hmm. like, it's like, maybe I will buy some of these cards and contribute to the third, to the third party market so that nice. like, like it's it's so unbelievably addicting and i don't encourage anyone to ever get into it <laughs> i mean look we're like like i said not the video games but the video games would probably be the most cost efficient way of playing these fucking these card games because you're not having to buy the physical card games you just play the game a lot of them are free to play off off the bat right and then you're just kind of well, like i was I- you know, yeah, it's like what what hobby isn't expensive though, right? Like so that just, is true. If you want to spend your money on on a bunch of cards, then spend your money on a bunch of cards. Everyone's it, it, hobbies are generally very very expensive. True, that is true. I mean, video games are expensive. Board games video are games expensive. Aren't cheap. You know what I mean? Yeah, Collectibles, like art, guitars, uh, snowboarding, riding a motorcycle, yeah. all that shit, dude. Right? <laughs> yeah, it's expensive. It's not cheap. It's all for the passion, so. man. Yeah, I mean, if you're into it, then that's totally cool, man. Let's look at magic, or let's look at some Pokemon boosters really quick before we get out of here. Um, six thousand XY evolutions is that big? Oh my god, is that a big deal? That that is cool. I I so that's a case. So uh-huh. we were looking yeah. at booster boxes before the booster box right there, the four thousand one that's or the three three thousand six hundred one mm-hmm. is probably more of a big deal because. That is one box, whereas that case is three boxes, I think. Oh, shit. Let's see. Wow. XY Flash Fire. Oh, this... it's six. There was, a, there was a thing under... I'm watching look at the stream now. There was a thing underneath. Oh, okay. I told you how many. 
are yeah, in there. So there's a there's a case right underneath the six thousand dollar one that's oh. for four thousand, and that's what's inside the case, that big long box. Oh, okay. Like the so evolving essentially, skies. that's so. What you're doing is you're buying what you're buying what the stores buy to oh. sell to consumers. Oh, okay. But you're just buying it straight from the companies, and the reason Damn. why the boxes are so uh, sought after is because the boxes have a specific number of packs, which gives you a very distinct ratio of mythic rare. I, okay, so I don't know how Pokemon works, but like in Magic the Gathering, it's like there's a, there's like almost always five to three mythic rares per box. If okay. you're buying cards at random, you have no idea. It's like a sh it's pissing in the wind. You have no idea what uh, your odds are to get anything. But mm -hmm. if you buy a box, you are guaranteed to have a handful of mythic rares. Usually, those are the chase cards. Mm. Sometimes they're complete duds. But like that's why people will spend so much money to buy a ton of cards, ninety nine point nine of which they're going to throw away. Uh, just for the opportunity to get like the better cards because it's more of a it's less of a like blind shot in the dark so it's like mm -hmm. if you buy a box that has 30 packs in it uh, let's just say uh it's better to buy the box with 30 packs than to just buy 30 random packs if mm -hmm. that makes sense right yeah like to to have like the same chance versus yeah. going with the fucking full box that guarantees at least a few right I mean, yeah. there you go. Uh, Lugia, $468. I wish I knew how strong... I wish I knew a strong Pokemon card. This but is a... has so many energies on it. Like, how could that... That's so... Uh, I don't know. How many colors was that? That was like... One, it's two, like one of every three, fucking color, that, dude. Look at that. Crazy. That just seems crazy. Uh, that must we, be an insane. Oh, it looks old. Actually, that I think that's a really old card because that's e-reader on it. So that is an old card. Oh, wow. the e-reader was back in the Game Boy Advance time. Oh shit! So that is really old. That's that's a Gen three. Um, then we got this Charizard EX two seventy six XYP Japanese Pokemon card. Uh, Game this, art this collection -Oh XY card. promos PR. That's the whole. That's oh, it's a promo. <laughs> That's why it's forty seven hundred dollars, forty two hundred. Excuse me. Yeah. So you don't even get those from packs. Oh look, get dude. From Here's an actual picture of it. Look at that shit. Crazy. Yeah, they got it rated and everything. I mean, if it's expensive, you got to get the card rated. I mean, like for this amount of money, you can probably buy a car, like a used one. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. A shitty used car. Yeah. A lot I mean, of it could work. Which will take you to work. Which will take you to work so you can make money. It doesn't have to be and shitty. You, you can buy be... more cards. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, four grand? I don't know, dude. <laughs> Could be old. Could be kind of old. Shining Gyarados. It's just, this stuff is just so crazy to me, you know? Like, I don't even know. Venusaur for $70 that just snuck in there. <laughs> I know. Like, I had it at the highest amount of money. So, uh, I guess uh, in summation. Card games are expensive, but they're fun. There's a lot of rules. There's a lot of games out there. We didn't really talk about Yu-Gi-Oh that much. I don't know shit about Yu-Gi-Oh. I tried to play it, and it's so confusing. And I don't that know was if my I'll first card game ever was understand it. Yeah, I don't think I'll ever understand it. But uh, you know, we could do like a Yu-Gi-Oh focused episode in the future. I think uh, we can yeah. get like Eric in here because he's really into it. Um, Anecdotally. Uh, <laughs> Magic Magic the Gathering was one of the most welcoming communities I've ever like been introduced to. Mm -hmm. Whenever I first started playing Magic, uh, a friend brought me to a card shop in my uh, uh, hometown, which is a tiny hometown. Had one card shop in the middle of town. And whenever I went there the first time, everyone was kind of teaching me how to play, and it was really cool. And then they encouraged me to come back next week. And when I came back next week, they had a trash bag where everyone was just opening their cards. It's called chaff. Like I said, people will open these boxes and 99% of the cards they're going to throw away. That's called chaff. Usually it refers to draft drafting. But mm -hmm. whenever uh, they were drafting their cards, they put all the cards in a trash bag. And then they put all cards from their personal collection of the trash bag. One person built me a deck. And then I got to take that trash bag of just free cards. To wow. Home. And so I just made my own decks. And then that just... 
gripped me into the game because now I had all these cards. So many people just want people, more new people into the hobby. And so yeah. if you just go out to these card shops, uh, sometimes you just get into engaged in conversations with Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, Magic the Gathering, it doesn't matter. And people love giving cards away to new people so that like it encourages them to come back. I do it all the time. I love giving my cards away to my friends, helping them build decks and stuff. Like I I don't buy cards anymore. I'm just giving my friends like different things. I'll look through their deck and be like, "Oh, you could use a vampiric tutor." And so I'll toss that to them. And it's like it's something about the like physically playing like these card games just br- this breeds a sense of community. Mm-hmm. And I really really enjoyed that aspect of it more than anything else. Yeah, I think that's how I got all the magic cards I have. You know, I, I, like a friend was really into it, and he just kind of like handed me a bunch of cards. I bought a couple, but for the most part, yeah, they hooked you up. So that's cool. I mean, yeah. that's a good thing about physical shit like this is that it does. You actually have to like travel or like go outside or like go to someone's house to like play Ew. them. You know what I mean? <laughs> so you know, get out of your house, actually, bro. Human interaction, <laughs> <laughs> like D and D. Here's a couple random yeah. uh, trading card games that I'm just going to read off uh, just throughout the years. Um, oh, there's nothing there. That's kind of interesting. Huh. All right. Uh, Dixie, Galactic Empires, Spellfire, Blood Wars, The Crow. <laughs> there's a good The Crow board game, I guess, or a card game. Heresy, Kingdom Come, Cult, Overpower, Power Cards. Battletech, we we all know what Battletech is. Wing Commander, wow, I didn't know there's a Wing Commander one. Killer Instinct, Monty Python and the Holy Grail collectible card game. Netrunner, XX Xenophile, the X Files collectible card game. Uh, Dune card game. Warlords, Xena Warrior Princess card game. Uh, the the Wheel of Time, Young Jedi, Yu Gi Oh. Like- <laughs> what? As just the time frame. <laughs> that was Fucking yeah. Pez, dude. We're, we're only at ninety nine. Pez, Pe- Pez card game. You're right. There's a, there's that's, a Pez fucking card game. There was a oh, dread God. one. That's crazy. Let's see. Uh, Sailor Moon, uh, Firestorm, Gundam MS War. I would play that. Uh, Lord of the Rings, of course. There has to be one of those. Warhammer forty k. Come on. Uh, let's see. Dot game hack. Of Thrones. Game of Thrones. Cyberpunk. Uh, which, you know, the original board game that became the video game. Uh, there was even a fucking Spongebob one in 2003. It's crazy. I could go on Is and on. Is there a BattleBots card Ooh, game? Ooh, let's see. No, there's not, unfortunately. They were, you should we're, make one. It's an opportunity. <laughs> They really should. Yeah, it is. You know, I would be like uh, battling fucking Mammoth against... Uh, uh, was, which which doctor? Say, again, no. giving away all, giving away all your good ideas on the internet. Mammoth versus witch doctor, and then the cards are like different like moves, like move forward two spaces. You know what I mean? <laughs> that kind of thing. What the hell is kaijudo? Whack kaijudo. Oh, they made a whack food trading card game. Force of will. Game. Force of will is one that I I recognize because it. Mm-hmm. Basically, every single expansion, similar to how Magic the Gathering goes to different planes, and so they have different aesthetics, Mm -hmm. Force of Will went to different animes. And so there's like a Cowboy Bebop (gasps) uh, card deck and set, and then there's like a Mortal Kombat one, I think. Like, I don't, there was like so many different, like, versions. I just said Mortal Kombat. I think that might be a different game (laughs) that did the same thing as Force of Will. But like, yeah, they jumped around to different, like, animes and stuff, and Mm. I don't know. I think that there's a lot of, like, uh, there's a lot of potential for different card games to kind of like show up and like uh, get a little niche. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. I think it's really cool. There's another type of card game that I that I play a whole lot called a deck builder, but that is oh, not yeah. a like collectible game. I think yeah. it's a totally different like. No, you know, and I was thinking about talking about uh, deck builders because I have a few. Like I have Clank, and then I have uh, uh, the Big Book of Magic. That's also a deck builder. Um, I have a couple others, uh, and like a lot of deck builder games are video games too, but there's like a ton of board game, like they're board games, but they're like card games. And usually those are deck builders. So, uh, we'll save that for next time. Uh, we'll definitely, we should definitely talk about that and like, you know, build a list and and talk about those. But, uh, you know, with, when it comes to trading card games, 
<laughs> what? Magic the Gathering. I can bring back Magic the Gathering draft format. Oh like, yeah. Just I mean, builder kind of guys. Come we on. could we could do about a <laughs> hundred episodes on card games. I mean, really, honestly, like one day we'll have to do like the actual, you know, deck of cards episode one one day an episode will just be us playing a game of magic the gathering over the cameras <laughs> i mean that's that's that more like a stream which we could do you know yeah. in the future i would love to do that so um, i have to hold my camera <laughs> like, <laughs> just with my hand both of yeah well i mean i have like uh tripods i just like aim the camera down it's easy peasy um that'd be that'd be fun uh maybe we'll do some kind of content like that in the future i'm down um, but in summation, I think that trading card games boil down to a few a few bullet points. Number one, costs a lot of money. Number two, it's addicting. Number three, it's like gambling. Number four, endorphins. And number five, at least it's social. What do you think? Any any numbers to add to that? And look, there's a cute dog. No, no I was going to say, I think you hit. So they... I hit it's it all, all of those things. All nail yep. on the head there. What's your dog's yep, name yep. again, Dave? Molly. Molly. Like the drug. Cute. Aww. Hi, Molly. Yeah, oh, I see a Molly. PBR on the table there oh, too. We're totally frozen, dude. There it goes. Oh, you, <laughs> no, I'm I'm back. You were you were, you were fr- yeah, frozen for a second. Yeah, I was frozen. <laughs> yeah, I was frozen. <laughs> it is a live show, baby. Um, but yeah, I think that we can we can call it here. We it was a fu- it was a great conversation. Uh, again, Nave, thanks for guesting as you have in the past. Let's do our endorsements oh, really quick. Uh, anybody has a- any endorsements tonight? Um, go right ahead. I endorse the game Vanquish. From okay. the makers of Bayonetta, uh, just play it. <laughs> I don't even want to explain. It's, just, <laughs> it's like, what if Gears of War and Halo had a baby, and that baby was somehow Japanese mm-hmm. and a Power Ranger that power slides around on rocket knees? Like, it's just so good. <laughs> That's fucking nuts. Um, if I if I um hmm, if I had to endorse something, I would say. Just, you know, buy something physical and play with it. You know what I mean? Ditch the video games for a night and play a board game. You know, buy a deck of cards. Try out one of these random, you know, card games or whatever. Like, buy something that's not a video game and sit down and, and figure it out. You know, go with your gut. You know what I'm saying? Buy a Gundam. Fuck Put a Gundam yeah. together. One of these, uh, baby! I'm, I'm gonna... Yeah, look at that. I'm going to kind of go on really. the same vein of that, but uh, I'm going to say uh, go read a book. Oh, yeah. It's a good one. Sit down, read a book. Actually read the book. Yeah, don't don't have someone... Don't listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a video it. game read if you have book. to. Ooh, there you go. Halo New Blood. Uh, does, does a manga count? Yeah, I would okay. say that counts. I got to yeah. finish my Uzumaki. <laughs> I was going to say, if you can read, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could read Calpy in the... Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> Mr. Hawks has a good point. I got I to gotta, I gotta back him up. He's playing Infinite Wealth. If you're playing a Yakuza game, you're allowed to not do anything physical. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> fair enough. I still got to be... Yakuza Yaku- the only exception. I still got to be Yakuza like a dragon. Maybe one day I will. Who knows? Okay. It's so long. They're it's so really long. long. Yeah, it's a really long game. Gage says my baby can't read. She's illiterate. Well, you know, she's a baby, dude. One yeah, day Molly, she'll get there. She'll get there. <laughs> she'll be able to read at some point. She's a baby. Why don't let's talk when she can talk? Let's start there. <laughs> yeah. Embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is embarrassing. Agreed. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Get it together, baby. Um. Again, Nave. Thanks for hanging out, dude. Thanks for being on the podcast. Check out his podcast with his buddy, Gaming Together Podcast. Um, I think it's Gaming Together Pod on Twitter. And you could just look up Gaming Together Podcast on YouTube, I believe. Is that correct? Yes, absolutely. Hell yeah. We neglect our YouTube, but we try. We try hard. Do you, are you guys on like audio feeds? Is that how you uh, do yeah. it? Yeah. So we normally, we're all on audio. Our YouTube is only audio, but you get to look at my beautiful artwork. <laughs> my immaculate i put a lot of effort into making our art look like i put no effort into it 
(laughs) nice (laughs) um no i mean i like i like this logo it's pretty cool but yeah find them on there and you can find you know their link tree here link dot linker linkter dot ee slash gaming together and then you can find their podcast here and and listen to them man they they, you know they podcast as well hell yeah one day i'll be drive my co-host up the wall he (laughs) hates me (laughs) <laughs> well, we hate we, each other. We love you here. You know what I mean? You're great. But, you know, yeah, I'm, anytime. I'm sure we I'm sure we'll fight about something one day. Just like how uh, <laughs> uh I don't agree with uh where you put Psychonauts 2, for instance. It's, I can't we can have a it. tier list argument. I can't agree with <laughs> yes, that. I was going to say again, that's his tier list. Subject <laughs> subjective. It's fucking subjective. <laughs> um Miguel, do you have anything you want to say to the people before we get out of here? Uh, we still have stickers available if anybody wants oh. to buy them. Hell yeah. So we check out the link tree. There's a, it's two bucks. Yeah. Two bucks for stickers. So cheaper than a pack cool of cards. Too. Oh, absolutely. Cheaper there than it a pack is. of cards. <laughs> I, I pinged it in the chat. Just look for the sticker link. Uh, if you go to link, link tr.ee slash neon pocket dimension, you'll find it. There, get a sticker. It's two dollars. We'll mail it to you. Miguel will mail yeah. it to you directly. You'll get a yes. cool ass yes, NPD sticker. Put it on your water bottle. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. Yep. Or in the bathroom at some dive bar. That's fine sure. too. Oh yeah, yeah. Stick it on the wall. <laughs> stick it on yeah. the stick toilet. it on the wall. Stick Free it real wall. estate. That's what it's for. <laughs> stick it somewhere. Just stick it. Nave, why don't you give him like a quote off the top of your head? That's that'll, that'll be the end of this podcast. Uh, don't go in the water. Don't do it. My anus is bleeding. <laughs>